I started my research on Wright uh, with the project of the Midway Gardens. It was a large, a vast, in fact, uh, entertainment complex in Chicago. And the reason I was interested in it is that uh, Wright has the most elaborate ornamental pro uh, program uh, for this project, uh, where ornament expands from uh, the plan uh, to the facade to the interior courtyard and the interior decorations until even the cutlery, the plates, the chairs and the furniture uh, for that building. We can start with this mural that was in fact installed in the tavern, uh, one of the interior spaces of the complex. And what interests me a lot here is first it has this graphic quality with these circles that as you see they're hanging in certain sequences like pendants. Uh, so there is an element of both levity and gravity. And these two forces compensate uh, one another on the mural. Uh, also, I find it very interesting that uh, they were supposed to uh, represent uh, the bubbles of sparkling drinks. Midway, I find it very interesting that ornament has this special quality. It, uh, all of these ornaments that we see here on these electric needles, high columns uh, installed at the facade and the courtyard, were supposed to orient uh, visitors driving to the complex from a distance in Chicago at night, but also act as modes of uh, disorientation. That is, they were supposed to attract and suck them in, the atmosphere, this phantasmagoric atmosphere of the complex, and make them stay more. So these uh, elements of both orientation and disorientation, balancing themselves, I find it very interesting, and both of them are uh, achieved through ornament. As we know in Wright, in some of his projects, uh, perhaps the majority of even the budget is about the cost of these ornaments or side objects, lamps, furniture, rugs, uh, murals. And we see that both in public buildings like the Midway, but also in residential buildings as well. One of the interesting discoveries I made while researching the project was in fact uh, a drawing by, for the Bunstall house uh, that shows a series of furniture, but uh, quite unexpectedly it shows the price of each and every of these items. We realize that they cost a lot, including the rugs, the lamps, uh, and all the pieces of furniture for each residence. And they might even represent the majority of the expense for the house. One of the qualities of what Frank Lloyd Wright calls organic ornament, that is an ornament that holds the, uh, uh, the building together, that has an integral quality and brings all the elements together uh, is that in fact it's very hard to extract anything from that scheme, right? So it makes these costs for things that might seem marginal or secondary absolutely essential and very hard to extract from the project. Another interesting discovery, which I think speaks a lot to the amplified function of ornament in right, is the transition from a surface element to the plant. For example, this graphic design for the Liberty uh, Journal covers called March Balloons, while it was originally intended to be a journal cover and that never happened, the original publisher rejected uh, those, it kept transforming and at some point it uh, turned into the plan of a rug that would cover uh, the floor of uh, the living room for uh, Wright's son, David Wright, and his house in Arizona, built around 1950-51. Uh, that is about 25 years after the original uh, design was made for the Liberty covers. Overall, this sequence of drawings shows the process of transformation of ornament as a very interesting and privileged category of object, a unique object that, as I said, throughout modernism is under the threat of extinction, but in right it survives, and in order to survive it has to change.